This is the Cliff Hall story, a story that reflects the power of ideas, the hope, perseverance, creativity, and drive of a photographer, artist, inventor, designer. A man determined to give us all a history lesson in love through the lens of his mind's eye. 1903, it was a time when African Americans were at the nadir of race relations. Indeed, it was a most difficult time when thousands of blacks had been lynched in the state of Georgia alone. A time when Cliff Hall's grandmother knew to leave Atlanta because life for blacks was trying at best. So she caught the train and headed for Los Angeles, carrying Cliff Hall's mother, Frances, who was three years old at the time. From the poplar tree. Los Angeles was a sprawling metropolis in the early 1900s. It offered hope and a whole lot of opportunity. Francis Covan met and married Cliff Hall Sr. And in August of 1925, Cliff Hall Jr. was born. But by age five, his parents divorced and Cliff went to live with his grandmother, Mrs. Lenny Covan. She was very supportive of everything he tried to do. He called her very sophisticated and danced the cakewalk to music by Scott Joplin. He attended 36th Street Grammar School and Fauché Junior High School and also John H. Francis Polytechnic High School and he was on the track team. Mr. Hall developed a special interest in drafting and industrial shop courses. This was soon proved to be a vital component in his career. Upon graduating from high school, Cliff Hall enlisted in the United States Navy in 1943, receiving training at the Great Lakes Naval Training Center in Illinois and further electrical training with a special unit of the U.S. Navy. Hall was destined for Okinawa but after the atomic bomb was dropped, his orders were changed from Guam and eventually he was shipped back to Los Angeles by train and discharged in 1946. Cliff and a Japanese American friend named Wallace Arima grew up in the same Los Angeles neighborhood. They shared a special bond. They would build mini cars and airplanes. It was the beginning of a friendship which exists to this present day. My best friend was a Japanese fellow named Wallace Arima. We used to design cars and airplanes when we were kids, and uh, I think that's how I got the bug to get to want to design a real automobile. Okay. At that time, there was a thing called a soapbox derby where kids would make uh, cars out of wood, and and they would have races and. Uh, he would build one, and I would build one, and we entered it into the Silk Box Derby. I think it was sponsored by Chevrolet or some, you know, big corporation. And, and that's, I guess that's where Cuff got interested in building cars. Ironically, during wartime, Arima joined the army, went to Europe, and fought for this country. But for Arima and many Japanese Americans, they would be tested. After. World War II started, uh, you know, I'm a Japanese American. I was born in the United States with Japanese ancestry, and when the World War II began, um, I was, uh, since I had Japanese heritage, I was considered the enemy, and uh, they put us all in, into camps. The camp that I was in was called Amachi, A-M-A-C-H-E, Colorado. After Arima was discharged, he enrolled in photography school and reunited with Hall. And he encouraged Hall to do the same at the Fred Archer School of Photography. Photography, well see, basically I was an artist. Mm -hmm. And um, the way I got into photography, when Wallace got out of the service, 
he came by my house and he said, I'm going over to Fred Archer School of Photography. And he said, you want to ride over there with me? I'm going to, I'm going to sign up. And I said, OK. So I went over there. So every morning he started coming by my house and I start going. I'm sitting in the back of the class. I'm getting all this free education. <laughs> I'm sitting in the back of the class until after the third day, the instructor says, how come you don't turn in any projects? I said, well, I don't go here. I'm just waiting for my friend. He said, you can't do that. You get out of here. So I went downstairs and signed up because, you know, for the GI Bill, they let you go. So I went downstairs and signed up and came back and sat in the class. Later, Hall attended Los Angeles City College, the Jepson Fine Art Institute, and the Art Center, enhancing his artistic talents. Hall's father had worked as a chauffeur and a cook for the David Wise family in Beverly Hills and helped Cliff land a job shooting the Sweet 16 birthday party for Wise's daughter, Judy. He added his creativity and the rest is history. I was working for the super rich, not just the wealthy. They had the people that are wealthy in Beverly Hills make out of something who was super wealthy. And I was shooting for the super wealthy. And one of my clients, uh, brought a whole gypsy caravan, wagons, horses, work, dancers and everything. Brought them from over in Europe for a part, just to be decoration for his party. He did substantial business in Beverly Hills and Westwood, covering many celebrity events and swank parties in Beverly Hills. He was a much in demand society photographer in Beverly Hills and Bel Air. Hall worked most steadily for the Los Angeles Sentinel, the city's biggest black newspaper in the 50s and 60s, including a lucrative business shooting socialites. Along with the Sentinel social editor, Jesse May Brown Beavers, Hall produced a page once a year called Los Angeles Best Dressed. Professional ladies and wives of doctors and lawyers, they wore what was top of the line and fashionable all year long. After Hall put his finishing creative touch to the page, Mrs. Washington, owner of the Sentinel, had to print extra copies of this edition because a lot of the professionals came from the South and would send multiple copies to family and friends back home. Hall even had a mobile van to process his pictures immediately after important social events, which was unheard of in the 50s and 60s, a testament to his ability to think out of the box. I remember one time we, he took me with him to be his assistant at this school. At one time, he, he had outfitted this whole raggedy truck to, to uh, select a, uh, a dark room. And he would go to a, a, an affair or something like that. He would take pictures of, this was years before, you know, everybody was doing it. He would take pictures of people and then he would go out to the truck and develop them and bring the pictures back. Hall had taken thousands of photographs for the Los Angeles Sentinel, yet he mentored lots of other photographers, including Howard Bingham, who eventually shot for Life magazine and became famous for his intimate portraits of Muhammad Ali. Hall also mentored Lamont McLemore, who along with Hall, opened Hal Munt Graphics, located on Southwestern Avenue at 48th Street. It was also where the Fifth Dimension rehearsed during their formative time. McLemore was a member of the group and a widely published photographer, which included Ebony and Jet magazines. McLemore, along with John R. Daniels, owner of Maverick Flats nightclub, gave birth to Elegant Magazine. It was a stylish, full-color publication, and McLemore was a photographic director. Many photos were taken at Halmont. It was a time when black pride was everywhere. In fact, since Hall lived near Hollywood, he was always exposed to show business people. Jazz musician Eric Dolphy lived next door, and Eddie Rochester Anderson lived on the other side. It starts with a B. Sound like something hot. Jack Bernie? Ben Bernie. Yes, sir, that's it. Ben Bernie. Thanks. Cliff Hall's uncle was Willie Covan, the legendary tap dancer who owned his own studio and taught Shirley Temple, among others.
Cliff Hall was in the midst of it all, and his confidence and creativity was moving fast. I decided that I would make my kids cars. So after I got married, I made my kids electric cars. I made them gasoline cars, which you'll probably see one of the pictures of, okay. of, uh, of my kid uh, driving up into a drive and uh, ordering a sandwich uh. with, with somebody waiting on him. And during the watch riots, Cliff Hall was armed with his camera. This picture was taken of me in the watch riot around about the same time right before I went to Europe. They were having the, the watch riots this, this, at the same time that uh, I went over in, in Europe and shot uh, Daniel Johnson, the young artist I knew, that I took a picture of him with Rockefeller. So he was my uh, first mentor, and I've known him since 1950, let's see, 50. I would say 55. He was able to, to take uh, light and bend it whichever way he wanted when he was developing uh, his negatives. And this was just with his two hands. He would take the burst of light and move it around on the paper so that when it was finally uh, finished, it would be what he saw in his mind. Actually, he introduced me to Nelson Rockefeller. Uh, it was on one of his uh, uh, photographic assignments, and at the time I was looking how I could get to New York, you know, because being in L.A., there's hardly very many connections you can make that would launch you into New York, and that was my... Uh, ticket into New York City. But this photographic assignment had significance far beyond Cliff Hall's or Daniel Johnson's expectations. While in Paris getting their luggage, he met Patricia Harris, who had just been sworn in as the U.S. Ambassador to Luxembourg by President Lyndon B. Johnson. Hall recognized her and showed her the photos he had taken of her going away party. She was so impressed, she immediately added Cliff to her entourage, and they flew to Luxembourg. Harris was the first African-American woman to hold a cabinet position and lead a law school. Therefore, Hall's photos of Ambassador Harris's trip served as an all-important historical record because no one from the United States was there to record it. But photography was just one of Cliff's interests. He was constantly thinking about ideas, innovations, and economic solutions for the community. So in 1965, Hall designed a car called the Corwin. It was a sleek prototype of the stock racing style car that would later become common on the city streets. With financing from the late businessman Louis Corwin, Hall built a stunning two-seater with a fiberglass body still regarded as years ahead of his time. Hall remembers his meeting with Louis Corwin that set it all in motion. One day I walked in his office, I'd done some photographic work because I do commercial photographic work. Mm -hmm. I shot some of his merchandise. And he said, Cliff, he said, what's your dream? I said, you gonna make it come true? He said, I'll try. He said, Cliff, you know, you have no idea how much money you, that you've helped me make. And he says, what do you want to do? I said, I want to build automobile. He said, you know how to build automobile? I said, I built my kids uh, at least five. I said, but I never built the full size one. I said, I want to build a real automobile. So he said, how much does that cost? You know, he said, how much do you need? I said, well, I really don't know. Uh, I said, I've never done it before. He said, well, how much you need to get started? I could answer that. I said, <laughs> I said the first thing come to him, I said, oh, about 3500 <laughs> He wrote a check for 3500 Now, his bar was on the back of his, his like, say his desk is here, and mm -hmm. his bar, he's standing with his back to me, going in his bar after he'd given me this check. And I thanked him and was walking out the door, and he said, Cliff, he said, that's the easiest touch you ever made, ain't it? And I took it as an insult, and I turned around and I said, Mr. Corn, I said, I'll still do photographic work for you. I said, but you, I thought you know, you knew me. I said, you don't know me, know me as well as I thought you did. And I said, here's your check, and I laid it back on the wow. desk. 
and I walked out. I was mad, and I got out on the, on Wilshire Boulevard, and uh, his secretary ran out there and said, Mr. Carmen said, come back. And I said, oh, the hell with him. I didn't come back. <laughs> so he kind of figured maybe I wouldn't come in. He could, can you imagine this man, multi-millionaire, coming out on Crint, on Wilshire Boulevard to give me some money I'm running away from? <laughs> right. So <laughs> he, took the, he took the check and stuck it in his pocket, and he said, Cliff, he said, I trust you. He said, I told my secretary, if I'm in Japan or out of the country or anything, when you need some more money, I'm not going to put no figure on it. I'm going to help you build that car. Just come and ask her for it. Wow. He spent at least $100,000, and I spent maybe 50 of my own money before that car got finished. When Hall completed the Corps in 1969, it attracted lots of high-profile admirers. So Hall immediately began scouring the black community for financing to build production models. Pledging their support was Commissioner Sybil Brand, Mrs. Ethel Bradley, wife of Mayor Tom Bradley, Arthur Mitchell, director of the Dance Theater of Harlem. He wanted the first Corwin offered for sale. Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr., members of the Fifth Dimension, Gibbert Lindsay, who was elected the first black city councilman in Los Angeles, and Kenneth Hahn, Los Angeles County Supervisor, had offered their support while Hall was building the prototype of the Corrin. Commissioner Sybil Brand, Councilman Gibbert Lindsay, Cliff Hall, and designer and arts center student Dennis Hughley, with their teacher Jackie Mack shown here. Gibber Lindsay had agreed to get his friends to invest $5,000 each, and Miss Brand would do likewise. And she requested Lindsay to call her so they could put it all together. However, the call was never made. The Corwin was never mass produced because it never made it to the production line. In frustration, Hall feels, even to this day, that a simple phone call and a follow through could have changed history. Who knows, even to this day, the man in this photograph was never recognized. Was he an admirer or the competition? And I, and I went into the, I won't call the name of the bank, but it's a <laughs> bank over here near the farmer's market. Uh -huh. And I asked the guy, I was clean too, I had my briefcase, I had, I had a three piece on, and uh, I had a proposal that was uptight, you know, it wasn't no Mickey Mouse, something scratched on a new on a piece of paper. I had right. it, everything together and I and I thought at the time, this is where you get money to do stuff like this. So I asked to see the manager or the you know, the man in charge and the girl at the window said said, Wait right here, I'll go get him. So he came out and he didn't even ask me to come into his office. He just stood right out there by the tellers when they're talking to me. And he says, well, what do you want? I said, I want to know how, to, how I go about getting a loan to build this vehicle. I said, you can look at the potential for it. I have all my plans, all the finance and everything. And so he said, no, he said, we don't do nothing like that. And so when I was leaving, he was laughing. And the, he was, t I guess I know what he's saying to the girl. And he was pointing, laughing, wow. like I said, this, guy must be out of his mind coming in here, you know, and me being a brother, too. I didn't help things. Right. So, uh, well, had, he, look, look, had he given me direction instead of doing that? Now, yeah. he could have said, I know I know. now that's not the place I should have right. went to get the money. If he just said, look, son, uh, this is, here's how you do this. You, you go to a venture capitalist or you get friends or family or you do, you know, things right. how it really works. He'd be a billionaire today, right. not a millionaire, and I'd be a multi-billionaire. The two biggest companies in the world copied my car in concept. J no, I won't call the names of them. But there's two, the two biggest companies, one of the biggest in Japan, one of the biggest in the United States, both design, um, had designed cars that were in concept, mm -hmm. just like my car. Okay. Now, if they're copying something I did 30 years ago, what do you think I could be doing now? So was Hall's ideas simply ahead of their time? The Corin predates the Pontiac Fiero and the Toyota MR2 that gained international reputations. 
Paul had ideas about the bullet-shaped enclosed three-wheel motorcycle that can be powered both electrically or with gasoline. A limousine that you can walk in and stand. I, I can't imagine if I sent that limousine to the Oscars, anybody ever written a limousine that you gotta crawl out of again. Or a compact set of space-saving furniture he designed with a table, sound system, closet, and bed that folds into a six by four by two feet cabinet. Even now approaching age 90, Mr. Hall often uses the computer to create abstract art and some thought provoking designs. The fact is, Cliff Hall is an artesian source of ideas. His friends remember. He just like took me under his wing and uh, he started uh, training me, taking me different places with him showing me about photography and how to make money in it. I mean, Cliff, one thing, that's one thing I can say about Cliff that really turned me on about him. He taught me how to make money in photography. I mean, you, you can get out there and get to shooting all day long, but if you ain't making no money, I mean, what good is it? I mean, because I don't think really people really realize, you know, the, the contribution that, that Cliff made, you know. Several years ago, um, when I was late, I was a columnist for the LA Times, and this was, I think this was Cliff's 81st birthday, and I met with him. I just met, I think he, we just been in touch, and I met, I met him for lunch. And um, I just wrote a column about how he was still, the same, even 81, he was still the same guy that I met. You know, he still had ideas he wanted to talk about, things he wanted to develop. To say he's a positive thinker, that doesn't really cover it. He's just, just, uh, just so. Uh, does not take no for an answer. He doesn't get that. He doesn't get that concept. Cliff is irrepressible. Um, he's, he's probably one of the most creative people I've ever met. There were times when Cliff was the only money I had. So, I mean, I got paid for coming up with ideas, and I couldn't come up with them as fast as he does. Uh, yeah, Cliff, Cliff is part of my life. Big that big part. I am so glad that he's around because, still around, because I just, I feel so, so attached to him. I, I do, I love the guy. The fact is, Cliff Hall's photography has touched many lives over the years. Former NFL All-Pro strong safety for the Denver Broncos, Dennis Smith, who was one of the most feared and hardest hitting safeties in the NFL, met and married his wife, Andre after seeing Cliff's photo of her in Jet Magazine. Cliff Hall is optimistic, idealistic, honest, and generous. He still has high hopes for everything, and mainly that people should put their money together for economic development and deliverance. And I'm about getting the underprivileged, uh, the power, by just a cooperative effort. So we had no control. I want to build industry so I can con have control and I could tell black people or Spanish people or minorities, I can give them a job myself and pay them a decent wage. You know, as far as I'm concerned, like a genius. His mind was always going and he always had, you know, ideas, ideas, ideas. He's done things way ahead of some people. Even that, the Portland car that he built, I mean, that was fantastic. I mean, it was just beyond what most people ever do. He, as far as I'm concerned, if he had ever been like IQ tested, he would have been off the charts. He's a very, very smart man. A final note, Cliff Hall simply wants to leave a legacy for his family, his children, and especially his grandchildren. In March of 2015, at the California African American Museum, the Light Catcher's celebration spearheaded by Irene Fertique was indeed a celebration to remember. It honored the pioneers in Los Angeles photography and Cliff Hall was among those honored. In addition, Jane Kennedy and Richard Roundtree was in attendance. My idol. Oh yeah. When I when I grow up, I want to be just like him. 
they're copying something I did 30 years ago, where do you think I could be doing now? Just give me 